Hi guys, it's Mrs. Vance again, and I certainly hope it works this time. This is the third time I've tried to record this, so hopefully it's going to work okay. If not, it'll have to wait till I get home and use my computer at home, because apparently my stuff at school is not working properly. Anyway, so what about the test? There are 40 multiple choice questions on the test. Uh, they cover pretty much everything that we've talked about in genetics, like the different kinds of crosses, Mendel's laws, probabilities, pedigrees, blood types, sex-linked traits, codominance, multiple alleles, um, polygenic traits, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so the, I'll, we'll go over some of the specifics on that, but basically pretty much everything we've done. Uh, there are three review questions that are about like meiosis, crossing over chromosomes, that kind of stuff, uh, but they're all relative to what we're doing now in, in terms of genetics. There are two bonus questions that are um, involving um, crosses. One's a monohybrid, one's a dihybrid, and they're worth three points each. I will recommend that if you're taking this at home, you probably should um, make sure you have some scratch paper handy uh, so that you can do the punt squares uh, when you come to them. And um, you can also use a calculator on the test if you need to. There is a calculator in the, for those of you testing at home, there's a calculator in the, in the uh, toolbar when you're taking the test over on the right hand side of the screen. But you can use your own calculator if you'd rather do that too. Anyway, so we're going to go on from there and talk about what's going on. So um, there are various things you should be able to do. And what I did in here is I basically just went back and pulled some of the uh, information from the, from the notes slides um, to reinforce all these things that you should be able to do um, on this test. So you should be able to define and distinguish between like true breeding, hybrids, P generation, that kind of stuff. These are terms that... Um, that Mendel introduced to us and we still use them today. The true breeding varieties are um, the result of self-fertilization and they're going to be homozygous, either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. When you cross two different true breeding varieties, you're going to get a hybrid. Hybrid is going to have one allele from the dom one a dominant allele and one recessive allele. And then um, when the fertilization basically is a hybridization or a cross, and then the the parents that were true breeding to begin with, like like in Mendel's case with the uh, purple flowers and the white flowers, um, those are the parent generation. Their offspring, their direct offspring, are called the F1 generation. Those are the hybrids, and then when the hybrids are allowed to self pollinate, they produce the F2 generation, and that's where you'll end up with the phenotype ratio, the, the three to one ratio of the of dominant phenotype to the recessive phenotype, and the genotype ratio would be one to two to one for the homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Um, if it's a true di a monohybrid where, where both parents are heterozygous for both for the trait that you're looking at. Um, you should be able to tell between the difference between homozygous and heterozygous. Dominant and recessive allele, genotype and phenotype. Those are just kind of uh, paired terms that you should know the difference between and be able to distinguish between them. Um, a homozygous genotype has two identical alleles like you see here or here. A heterozygous has two different alleles like you see here. The phenotype is the physical expression of the trait, the um, appearance usually like these three tall plants and one short one. And the genotype is the makeup of the trait whether it's homozygous uh, dominant or recessive or heterozygous. A monohybrid cross is going to be a cross between two heterozygous individuals for one trait. And a Punnett square, of course, is how we go about calculating the, um, the likelihood of any particular combination of, um, of alleles in the offspring. Uh, please remember that the, the, um, Letters that you put on the outside of the Punnett square are representing the possible gametes that could be inherited from that particular parent. And the inside boxes are going to show the results if this particular sperm cell gets with this particular egg cell. Uh, remember also that a Punnett square is a, is a um, probability, not a promise. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's the most likely thing. And that every fertilization event requires a new Punnett square, or basically starts over again from scratch. It's not cumulative. Each, each fertilization event is an independent of all the other ones. Mendel's Law of Segregation is talking about the fact that when you're inheriting uh, alleles for a particular characteristic, whatever that happens to be, you have two alleles for each characteristic, 
and your sperm cells or egg cells are going to get either one of those, one or the other of them, but not both of them. The two alleles are going to separate from each other during the production of gametes that happens in uh, meiosis 2 when the, uh, when the, um, or meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 when the uh, homologous chromosomes separate. Um, the relationships between homologous chromosomes, remember that homologous means homo means the same and the logos for part refers to the position of the gene on the chromosome and basically you have the same location for the genes of the, of the same gene. So you have a gene for hair color or you have a gene for uh, flower color or whatever. The two alleles that are on the uh, homozygous, I mean on the uh, homologous chromosomes may be the same like they are in homozygous individuals or they may be different like they are in heterozygous but there's still going to be alleles for that gene that particular trait whatever that happens to be. Um, Mendel's law of independent assortment is what he figured out when he tried looking at two um, traits at the same time. He uh, but when he looked at this he found that they didn't necessarily inherit the the parental phenotypes that they could be different because the inheritance of one characteristic is not really influencing the, the inheritance of another one. Now we know today that that's because they're on set, they would be on separate chromosomes. In the case of ones that would be on the same chromosome, they would be, uh, the closer together they are on the chromosome, the more likely they are to be separated and the farther apart, the more like they, they are to be inherited together. Um, the dihybrid cross is basically like two monohybrid crosses and you could take the results of that and then multiply them together to get the different percentages um, or different fractions that you should get. And this is called the law of independent assortment because the inheritance of one chromosome is not affected by or influenced by the inheritance of another one. Pedigrees. Pedigrees show the inheritance of a trait through uh, multiple generations in a family. It's a good way to figure out perhaps whether a trait is uh, dominant or recessive. You can use it to figure out genotypes of some, at least some of the family members, if not all of them, depending on what the trait is you're looking at. And uh, we get some idea of the particular type of inheritance it happens to be. On uh, When you look at recessive and dominant disorders and things like that, then you can look in at a pedigree really helps to tell that. For instance, this family pedigree here, you notice that not very many individuals have this, this trait, whatever it happens to be. But here you have two parents that do not have that trait, who have children who do, which means that the, this must be a recessive trait, recessive alleles, because both parents are exhibiting the dominant phenotype, or the, a phenotype that's different than what, than what the children can have. And so that gives you a good indication that, it's, that it is a recessive trait. Um, the one down here at the bottom, is actually representing a dominant um, trait. And this is sometimes a little bit harder to determine. I'm not going to ask you to figure that out on a uh, on a test, but just so you know that uh, you can look at it and figure so something out. In other words, the child can't have, there's no child that has this condition that doesn't have a parent who did have the condition. And so here we have three children number 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2, 7, whose, whose parent, 1, 1, had the condition, and they have it too. Some of their siblings have it, some of, their, some of them do not. The, um, the child, number uh, 2, 4, that doesn't have the condition, their children do not have the condition either. But, but 3, 3, who does have the condition, has a mother who has that, and so it's inherited directly as a dominant trait. Sometimes that's a little bit harder to determine, but I wouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. This last one here is a sex-linked um, sex pedigree. And a sex-linked pedigree, the thing you look for is to fit, see whether what the gender of the affected people. And if you look at this carefully, you see that all of the infected people, um, uh, the people who have this condition, are males, except for this one female down here. The females are uh, generally carriers. They have, uh, they have one allele of that, and the other allele is normal. This one female that has the condition has a mother that is a carrier and a father who has the condition. And so that's the only way you can inherit it because these are traits that are carried on the X chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes and so they have to have, uh, it's a recessive, it's recessive in females but dominant in males because males have only one, chrom one X chromosome and no genes on the Y chromosome to counteract the, uh, the one recessive allele. 
There are various inheritance patterns that are different than what Mendel described. Okay, and so we're going to talk about some of those. The first one is incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, you have two distinct um, phenotypes that are very different from each other, like the red flowers and the and the white ones. But when you when you breed the two together, when you when you fertilize the two together, the intermediates that you get, the hybrids that you get, are actually pink, which is kind of in between the red and the and the white. And so, in incomplete dominance, you're going to have some. The phenotype is going to be somewhere in between the two extremes. It's going to be a, like a blending of the two traits, as if you took red paint and white paint and put them together to make pink. Multiple alleles is when you have more than two alleles for a particular trait in the population. And blood, blood types, human blood types, are a really good example of this. Because you have three different alleles. You have an A allele, a B allele, or an O allele. A and B are also a good example of codominance because both are dominant. They both produce their product, whatever that is. In this case, it happens to be a carbohydrate on the surface of the red blood cells. The O is recessive to both of those things, and so the O has neither of those carbohydrates, whereas the AB, since they're codominant, both of those carbohydrates are expressed, and so they're both present on the surface of the cells. And the last one on here is polygenic inheritance. That means that you've got multiple genes coding for the same trait. Things like skin color, which is shown here, and hair color, eye color, um, height, various things like that. Uh, there are multiple alleles, multiple genes that code for that. And basically what you get is, uh, as a result of the additive effect of all of the uh, recessive or dominant alleles that you have. In the case of skin color, the more recessive alleles you have, the lighter the skin tone. And the more uh, dominant alleles you have, the darker your skin tone. And individuals with the same number of, of, of positive, or I'm sorry, dominant or recessive alleles, even if they're in different, even if they're on different genes, would have the same, would have the same phenotype. Their genotype might be slightly different, but their phenotype is, is the same. And that's generally what you see in polygenic inheritance. In humans, sex is determined by means of the X and Y sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes. That means every egg cell that is produced by females is going to have an X chromosome in it. Males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. The X and Y are very different chromosomes. The, the um, Y is a whole lot smaller than the X. It doesn't have the same genes or as many genes on it as the X one does. Uh, the, and the genes that are present on the X are necessary for development, whereas the genes on the Y chromosome are just strictly for maleness. And so um, the sperm cells that are produced by males have either an X or a Y, and that's going to determine the gender of the offspring because the mother can only can only um, provide an X chromosome, whereas the and so if the zygote receives an X chromosome sperm, then that would make the zygote a girl, and if the um, zygote uh, receives a Y chromosome sperm, then it's going to become a male. Sex-linked inheritance, um, like we talked about a while ago, again, it's really it's much easier to track on a uh, pedigree because you can see that all, that almost all of the um, affected individuals are males. Um, Sex-linked disorders include things like hemophilia, like we showed here with the uh, with the Ro Russian royal family, also color blindness, and the other main one we talk about is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. But much more frequently, we talk about color blindness or um, hemophilia in humans and eye color in um, fruit flies. So those are the more common ones to talk about. Quick little um, concept map here just going over you know genes and chromosomes basically. So genes are located on chromosomes. There are alternate versions of the gene called alleles. The, the alleles or the genes are at specific locations called loci. Loci is the plural, the singular is locus, L-O-C-U-S. If both alleles are the same, then we call that genotype a homo, I'm sorry, homozygous. If different, the genotype is called heterozygous. In a heterozygous individual, the expressed gene or expressed allele is called dominant, and the one that's unexpressed is called recessive. When you have some phenotype that is in between the dominant and recessive phenotypes, then that's called incomplete dominance. So study for your test. Uh, again, have some scratch paper and perhaps a calculator if you if you don't want to use the one online. Um, when you take your test tomorrow, just make sure you study, look back over your notes, go through back through your worksheets, 
and activities that we've done to kind of review how to do various things, and you should be fine. See you next time.